I was going to say, I just, uh, yeah, that should be okay. Yeah. That's interesting. Ah. Good morning. Thought it'd go all right. <laughs> I have to take my hearing aids out while I'm up here. Otherwise, I end up with <laughs>
this morning we've got uh, Ken with us, who's going to help us explore the um, explore the word a little bit more. And I realised when I was watching back uh, from last week's video, I really shouldn't say GNU because it sounds dreadful on live stream. So we're going to hear Ken explore the word a little bit more. My mum would be slapping me using common language. We're going to uh, do it again, see. <laughs> We're going to uh, light a candle this morning and then I'll lead us through the Lent liturgy. So on the second Sunday in Lent, we place a strip of red cloth around the Lenten cross to symbolize Christ's blood. We remember that the call upon Jesus and upon us is not an easy one. It is costly and often countercultural. And so a reading from Mark chapter 8. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. Let's pray. Most holy God, give us the desire to reject evil, no matter how profitable or popular it appears. Help us to seek to do the right thing, even though it costs us dearly. Amen. Ken, it's wonderful to have you with us this morning, and we look forward to hearing from you. Good morning again. And as Lee said, it's a gorgeous morning. The sun is shining, which is really nice. And uh, we start by praying our prayers of confession together this morning. Let us pray. Father God, we are all too quick to pass judgment, all too quick to criticize others, all too quick to condemn. Lord, help us to look in the mirror of our lives before we look into the lives of others. Forgive us for what we have done in both word and deed. Teach us to forgive others as you forgive us, Lord. Show us how to walk in the light of your love. Amen. Let us say together the prayer that Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. I will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we listen to Andrea sing this morning and we... Hopefully you can join in at home. From heaven you came, helpless babe. Not 
one day when we can stand here in front of the church and see our full congregation back singing those lovely words again. In the meantime, I'm going to ask Jean if she'll do our two readings this morning. Our first reading is from Psalm 22, verses 23 to 31. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the, afflic the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all of the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. Yeah. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down before him, shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn saying that he has done it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Mark 8, verses 1 to 38. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly, but Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, if you want to become my follower, follower let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. Of them, the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Jean. When I 
hear that reading from uh, the New Testament this morning when Jesus says to pick up your cross and follow me. And the phrase that comes to mind is, wow. I wonder what Peter was thinking when he rebuked Jesus for predicting his death. And in turn, Jesus rebuked Peter. Did he not understand that Peter was only acting out of love for Jesus? And what must Peter have thought when Jesus publicly, publicly accused him of being the devil, the evil one? Peter, who Jesus referred to as his rock, Peter, who was the unofficial second in command, and who would eventually take a leading role in Christianity. What Peter was probably saying was what we, or what they were all thinking, what the disciples were thinking at the time. Because like us, the disciples are human. When they started to follow Jesus, they did not expect to be caught up in the suffering, rejection, and death. And as for the resurrection, well, that must have been a very strange concept. During the time with Jesus, they had seen him perform many miracles. They'd seen him as a lifesaver, a healer, a prophet, and the Messiah. And then Jesus started to cause more confusion, a lot of confusion amongst the disciples when he announced to the crowd, if you want to become my followers, then let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Everyone knew these days that death on the cross, or in those days, sorry, <clears throat> Death on the cross was a Roman punishment reserved for the most extreme lawbreakers. What had they done to deserve the threat of such a fate? What did any, why would anybody want to die in that way? What did he mean when he said, for those who want to save their life will lose it. And for those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. You know, I don't think that's what the disciples signed up for when they uh, started to follow Jesus through his mission. I think they must have been asking themselves some very serious questions, um, perhaps even questioning their faith, challenging their faith with God. It's a question we all ask, have we been challenged? Has your faith been challenged? Do you still have that same strength in your faith as you had this time last year i certainly know my faith has been challenged over the uh, past 12 months jesus was preparing his disciples for what was to come just as he prepares us to do the same over the past year we've all been challenged with the terrible consequences of the coronavirus some of us have lost friends and family to COVID-19. And how many of us have questioned why? So what did God really mean when he, or what did Jesus really mean when he said, take up your cross and carry me? I pondered on this particular question a lot recently, especially preparing this lesson for today. So I thought we'd begin with what Jesus probably didn't mean. It's very difficult to interpret the exact words that he meant to say. But a lot of people interpret the cross as being a burden, a burden that we must carry for the whole of their lives. Maybe a, a strained relationship or a thankless job or a physical illness or addiction. With self-pride, some people say, that's my cross I have to carry. I don't think that's what Jesus meant when he said, take up your cross and follow me. When Jesus carried his cross to Golgotha to be crucified, no one was thinking of the cross as a symbol of burden. Today, we see the cross as a symbol of forgiveness. Forgiveness, grace, and love. But when Jesus was crucified... The cross represented nothing more than the torturous death. Because the Romans forced convicted criminals to carry their cross to the place of execution, whilst facing ridicule and scorn from people along the way, and eventually going to a very painful cross. How do we read, take up your cross and follow me today? 
It's to me, it's the call to surrender, to, run, to, to surrender oneself truthfully to God, totally to God, following Jesus in every way. Now that's the hard thing. Following Jesus is not easy. It is when life runs smoothly, when we jump out of bed on the morning and the sun's shining and there's no pain from the arthritis and there's no chesty cough and we can run around like spring lambs. It's lovely. But when we start to get other problems, the problems of COVID, the problems of age, the problems of loneliness, we sometimes start to think, why me? We sometimes think to ask Jesus, why this time? Why have I got aches and pains this morning? Why did so-and-so happen to my friend? Why did this happen to someone else? Luke tells us in chapter 18 about a certain young man who came to Jesus and said, Good father, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus' reply was, No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony. Honor your mother and father. The young man replied, All these things I have kept since I was a boy. And Jesus said to him then, sell everything you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. Now the young lad was extremely sad when he heard this, because he was a very wealthy man. It's very true that you, when Jesus asks us to sacrifice everything to follow him, we sometimes think, well, you know, I do have a nice... 36 inch television. I do have a nice car. Everything I've got is lovely. What will it benefit me to give it away? So I ask a question to finish this lesson. How much are we prepared to give to God? How much are we prepared to pick up that cross and follow Jesus? Because what Jesus needs is a total commitment. Not only to God, but to God's children everywhere and in every walk of life. So that when we go into the streets and we see our fellow humans, we need to think of their problems. We need to think of the cross that they carry and see how we can help them. Because by helping our fellow humans, it's the act that God really wants us to do. And that's the cross that I think he's given us. If we take up our cross and help our fellow man, we will gain God's love. Amen. And now our next hymn, which is on my sheet. When I survey the wondrous cross. I shouldn't have forgotten that. It's my favorite hymn.
And now our prayers of intercession. There is a response that you'd like to say at home. When I say, in you, O Lord, you reply or respond, we put our trust. In you, O Lord, we put our trust. Loving God, because we trust you, we come to you now with our concerns for the church and the world. We bring all those who find, so hard, find it so hard to believe and so hard to trust in the faithful, loving God. We bring all those who teach the faith, all who preach and chat the good news, give the right words for each situation and each person, and enable the seed to take root and grow. In you, O oh Lord, we put our trust. We bring those whose authority and decisions affect the lives of many people and the health of the planet. We pray for sensitivity and honesty and the strength to retain integrity, even in positions of power. In you, O oh Lord, we place our trust. Father God, we pray for families in all their different forms, and may the support networks be there to help those in these times of COVID-19, whether it is needed for home, homeschooling, job uncertainty, money worries, or health problems. In all the changes and troubles of life, may we be assured of your everlasting protection. In you, O Lord, we place our trust. We commend to you love and mercy for all of those who have died, and we ask that they may know the forgiveness, peace, and joy of heaven. We thank you for understanding and compassion for all who mourn, especially for the family of Barbara Rogerson. In you, O Lord, we place our trust. Loving God, we bring all who find their lives spinning out of control and give them a working knowledge of your total loving and unchanging presence and reassure them, of, reassure them with your everlasting protection. Encompass all who are unwell in your healing embrace and fill them with comfort and peace. In you, O oh Lord, we place our trust. Heavenly Father, give us thankful hearts to bless your name in sadness and in joy, knowing that you're always beside us. Accept these prayers in the, in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And our closing hymn, a message to carry out God's work, I, the Lord of sea and sky.
Thank you to everyone who's helped with this service this morning. May the blessing of Father God bring us love. May the blessing of the Son, Jesus Christ, bring us peace. And the blessing of the Holy Spirit bring us joy. Go in the name of the Lord and live in the light of Jesus Christ. Amen.